Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Spider IDE to interactively load data in the, from the Variable Explorer and just plot it with a minimal amount of coding. Uh, so let's show off some features maybe that you're not using in, the, in Spider. So let's get to it. So I'm, I'm in, I've got my uh, Spider opened up and I'm on the Variable Explorer pane. And then inside of that pane I can select to load data. And I've got my data here called Spy Data is actually uh, stock data from the first part of 2020 through the through the crash so it's kind of uh, interesting to look at so I'm just going to open that up and it's comma separated value files and uh, this window is a little bit small so let me make it a little bit larger for you to see you can see in the first row there I've got date open high low close volume and that's the uh, that's the titles to each of the columns here and I've got some uh, options that I can select from um, is this tab separator? Uh, no, I know it's a, it's comma separated value. So there's the you can put in the delimiter there. And I don't want to skip any rows, but I could skip rows, and then it would also skip if I had any comments in the data. So let's just go ahead and load this. I'll just select next. You can see it's kind of nicely laid out here. And once again, here are my headers for for each of the the columns. There's the date, um, and then um, all the way out to volume. And so what I'd like to do is import this, not as an array or a list, but as a data frame. And we will load that up. And we've worked with data frames in previous, um, pre previous videos. So in the Variable Explorer, we can see it says it's a data frame data type. And I can click on this and once again see the data, and see the column headers, and all the data. And uh, I can rename this. I'll just go ahead and rename this and call this Variable A. And I know that to be able to plot this, if you right click on this, you can see here's the things that we can do to the data. But I know if I want to plot this it, it, uh, in the Variable Explorer, it needs to be in a floating point array. So I need to get this from a data frame into a floating point array. So let me do that. And to do that, I need to import the pandas um, module. And then what, what I want to do is I want to can take A and I want to convert it into a floating point array. But first off, let's just take an A. We want to get the closes, the close column is what we want to plot. So I'll just put that in, in and pick off that column and call it B. And now if we come up, we see that the data type is a panda series, but it's just the column that we want to, to plot, which is close. So once again, to be able to plot this interactively in the Variable Explorer, I need to convert that to a NumPy floating point array. So let's import NumPy as NP, and then we'll basically say uh, uh, C equals B, and we want to uh, convert that to an array. So it's actually going to be NP as floating point array B. Okay, let's see if that'll work. And now let's go up and look at C in the Variable Explorer. And we see that we've converted that to an array starting with 288. And it's a floating point array, so we should be able to plot that. So I right click, say plot, and then now it's been rendered over here within the plots pane. And that's what the data looked like uh, in 2020 when the stock market crashed, the close of the S&P 500. So um, the other thing I think that would be interesting to show is I could have just plotted this by uh, saying import matlib, uh, matplotlib, lib dot pyplot plot as plt. And then I, and data frames are very easy to plot. So I could have said just plot dot plot, and then let's plot the data frame which we was uh, B. Um, let's see, I forgot what the name of it is, so I'll just come back and look. B was the series, so we could have just plotted B here, I believe. Let's try that. And it go over to the plots, and we can see a second plot. The first, first plot was the plot of the numpy floating point array, and the second plot is the series. Just to prove that, let's delete those, come back over here, and I can use the upward arrow key to get the last command and then rerun that. And we can go see that we've, we've plotted that out again there. 
So um, I guess the final thing I'd like to show here is that there's some things called magic commands in the IPython editor. And so if I want to, to plot uh, my figures as a floating um, plot, I can say matplotlibqt, and qt is actually a graphics uh, a graphics library that will plot it as a as a floating figure with some additional features like an interactive zoom and things like that. So let's go ahead and run that. And now if I go back and I make my plot, it creates an interactive plot, which I can just click on the click on the icon on your taskbar and let's expand this. And so now I can come in and I can zoom in on different regions. I can pan if I I want to pan using the panning tool and then um, in interactively um, show, uh, change the, the scales and the labels and do things like that as well. So this is a really nice tool to be able to, to, be able to plot it as a floating figure and you can edit the, the axes and the legends here. So a little bit of uh, additional information about how to use Spider and hope that helps you out.